When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. I'm quickly going to show you guys how we can make carbonated water. And an example of carbonated water itself would actually be Coke, Coca-Cola. With Coke, what we do is we actually have high pressure, a high pressure situation. We pump in these carbon dioxide molecules and we pump them in under high pressure. Now what that means is you're going to have here, you're going to have your gaseous water molecule, your gaseous carbon dioxide molecules. And because of that high pressure, they're actually going to be forced into the actual Coke solution and become aqueous. So the first step, which happens under high pressure, is we have a carbon dioxide, which is the gas form, here gas, will go into carbon dioxide in the aqueous dissolved form, and that will happen, an increase in the dissolved form will happen because of that high pressure. The second step is that if we have an increase in carbon dioxide, what that means, especially in the aqueous form, that means we have these water molecules, so we have our carbon dioxide here, and we have our water molecules here, and because of an increase in carbon dioxide molecules, and that will make a shift from our reactants to our products, which means eventually we have an increase in these carbonic acid molecules, which are the, these ones here, because we've increased reactants, the products on this side, which means we have a shift to the reactants. Now, because we've increased the carbonic acid molecules, well, that will happen is that will means we have an increase here. That shift goes again to the right hand side. It'll be a shift to the right hand side, which means this will be likelier to be dissociated into hydrogen molecules, hydrogen ions, and bicarbonate ions. So we have these originally, and they will break up into your hydrogen and your carbonate ions. Now this is your end product, and this here is acidic. So hydrogens make something acidic, which is why our coke and our carbonated water, soda water, are all quite acidic. And these are the three steps you need to have to make that happen. First, you need to have carbon dioxide dissolved. Once carbon dioxide is dissolved, it will be increased in concentration for the dissolved carbon dioxide. That will lead to an increase in the forward reaction to produce more carbonic acid. Because we have more carbonic acid, that will lead to an increase again in the forward reaction for number three. And that will be leading to an increase in hydrogen ions and in carbonate ions. And this will ultimately lead to it being quite acidic. So these are the steps we need to know when it comes to producing soda water or carbonated water or coke. They're all the same. Now the actual dot point itself says describe the solubility of carbon dioxide in water under various conditions as an equilibrium process in terms of the lecher Thiers principle. So we'll cover all of this, but for each of the three conditions, such as increase or ch change in pressure, change in temperature, and change in concentrations. First we'll do a bit about gas pressure. So what you can imagine if we were to open this actual bottle here, if this were open, what that would mean is the actual carbon dioxide molecules could actually leave, which would result in less carbon dioxide gas molecules, which would result in a shift from right to left, a reverse reaction, because and that would mean that we have this degassing. So we have over time we have more and more of these molecules leaving if the cap itself were open. So we want to make sure we don't have a cap which is open because otherwise there would be no equilibrium. So all of this what we're just going to talk about is a closed cap. There's going to be only an equilibrium in a closed cap otherwise you're going to have things moving around and we would have no equilibrium. Now when it comes to pressure, and I mentioned earlier if we increase our pressure what that means is if we increase our pressure we're going to go and decrease the gaseous carbon dioxide and increase the aqueous carbon dioxide because the pressure itself forces more of the actual carbon dioxide to be dissolved. Right? So increasing our pressure means we will increase our carbon dioxide which is dissolved and because of that dissolved carbon dioxide being increased that means that in the second equation we have these three equations you know the second equation the carbon dioxide will have been increased which is again the stuff we mentioned earlier. Is that these are our carbon dioxide molecules. These will have increased. So let's say we have one or two more than we had beforehand in our solution because they move from here, from the actual gas state into the aqueous state because the pressure made them dissolve. 
And now we have more of the actual reactants in the product, which means we have a shift to the right-hand side. And that shift produces more of these bicarbonate ions. So you're going to see this increasing. And the reason why these increase is because you're going to have the water molecules reacting with the carbon dioxide molecules. So these will react together. And these will react together. And when that happens, we have these bicarbonate, there will be these carbonic acid molecules being formed. That's the reaction itself. So there will be more of these. And the reason why there will be more of these is because we actually had them being formed when water molecules and carbon dioxide molecules reacted together. Now, because we have more carbon dioxide molecules, we have an increase here. And that, again, leads to shift to the right-hand side to equal out that, to balance the equilibrium again. And that in leads to an increase in hydrogen ions and carbon ions. So we have, if we were to increase these here, these are our carbonic acids, what would happen is there'd be more of them breaking down to balance it again. So over time, these would then disappear. And the reason why they would disappear is because they're being decomposed into their hydrogen and bicarbonate forms. And so you should know that the pressure itself will increase the amount of acidity, so it will make the actual coke more acidic. And the reason why is because there's a downward, so once we increase pressure here, this is the first thing that happens, and because this happens, this happens, step two goes to right, and because step two goes to right, then step three will also go to right. So increasing our gas pressure will increase our acidity, it will make it more acidic. Now if we change our pH, so what we could do is, we could, in this bottle, we could add some citric acid, and citric acid releases hydrogen ions. So these balls I'll add in here are the same as our hydrogen ions. I'll just use a different color just to show you where they actually came from. So in the last step, the third step, we're going to add more of these. What that means now is we have more than beforehand. The equilibrium is not there anymore. We have more of these hydrogen ions than beforehand. What that means is it's going to go, the reverse reaction is going to go to equal out that, again, that, that change, which means we're going to have an increase in the carbonic acid. And once we have an increase in carbonic acid, well, that means for the second reaction, we have an increase here. That's the same as these. These two are identical. And so we increase them here, which is the same as increasing them here. That means we're going to have, again, a reverse reaction happening to equal out that change. And then you're going to have, eventually, you're going to have more carbon dioxide aqueous being produced and more water being produced. And again, this has been increased, which is the same as a second step here. So we have the carbon dioxide being increased, the aqueous carbon dioxide, because of the second step. And then, again, that leads to an increase in the carbon dioxide gaseous form. So here's the exact opposite of what happened when we changed the pressure. If we change the pH, if we add more pH, if we add more of these hydrogen concentrations, it will go the reverse way, which means overall it's something we call it degassing because you're going to have more gas being produced. So for the final one, you're going to have more of these going into the gas form. More of these will be in the gas form and less of it will be dissolved. That happens if we change our pH, especially if we decrease our pH, then this will happen. If we were to increase our pH, the opposite will happen. But if we were to change our temperature, let's say this reaction itself, so the actual carbon dioxide gas into carbon dioxide aqueous is exothermic, which means it releases heat. So all we have to look at is this last, the first bit here. So let's say we had a change in temperature. Let's say we increase our temperature. So if we made it hotter, so increase temperature. So if we made it hotter, that means that it won't go this way because if it's going to go the forward reaction, that means it's going to release even more heat and would make it even hotter. So it's not going to happen. What's going to happen is going to, it's going to be the reverse reaction. It's going to go from dissolved carbon dioxide into gaseous carbon dioxide because it's not going to release heat. It's going to do the opposite. It's going to absorb heat. And we had an increase, it might have been really cold, uh, hot outside. And what's going to happen is most of this, much of this aqueous carbon dioxide is going to leave. And it's going to leave because it was made into the gas form because of that change in temperature. It's going to have to equal out those numbers. And the way it does that is by making it into gas. 
So we said that if we have a increase in gas pressure, that will lead to an increase in acidity by going through steps one, two, three. If we have a change in pH, for example, if we were to, were to decrease our pH, which makes it more acidic, which means we add more of these hydrogen ions, this would go the opposite way, so we have more gas being produced, less pH, more gas being produced. If we were to increase our temperature of the surroundings, it might be a hot day, that would mean that this reaction would go into reverse because in this forward reaction it would release heat, but in the reverse reaction it would absorb heat. In this case, because we want to counteract the hotness, it will actually absorb heat, which means it will go from the aqueous carbon dioxide into the gaseous carbon dioxide, and you're going to see more of it coming out and become gas. Whereas if it were the opposite, if we had a cold day, so if we decrease the temperature of the surroundings, the opposite would happen. So it depends on the temperature. But you can see here that the actual solubility of carbon dioxide in water depends on pressure, depends on pH, and depends on the temperature itself. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.